So I'm always talking about food and memories and connections, right? This is probably the number one, I have to say. I mean, there's so many recipes that I do that I have memories for, but I think this one is the number one uh, recipe where I just have a flood come to me because it's just associated with so many different times in my life growing up. And it is my family's, what we used to call, barbecue sauce, but it's not barbecue sauce really, it's a marinade. And this is the way we used to barbecue, i.e. grill <laughs> chicken. I'm saying this because everybody says, hey, come on over for a barbecue. But nine times out of 10, you end up grilling, right? And we ended up grilling too. My uh, uncle and my dad used to take care of that. Let's get to this marinade because the chicken's gotta marinate for two days. Yeah, yeah. But it starts with, all these fresh herbs. So it's one of those recipes that you do in parts, right? One part this and two parts that. So this is what I've got. All these fresh herbs that my uncle used to actually grow in the garden. We've got some of the essentials. We've got some fresh thyme. We've got some fresh oregano. And if you can find it, and he was growing it, fresh marjoram, uh, fresh sage, fresh rosemary, and fresh Italian parsley. And as you can see, it's pretty much one part to one part to one part to one part, including the garlic, believe it or not. Yeah, we're gonna use all that garlic. And um, the parsley, two parts. So it's one part of everything to double the amount in parsley, and then um, whatever extra virgin olive oil you end up needing. I might need more than that, I don't know, we'll find out. So my uncle used to stand there and chop and chop and chop everything by hand, but since we're doing a lot, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw everything in here. So I'm gonna put the thyme in with the garlic, and I'm putting these two in together first. And you wanna break it down until you have a consistency that looks like that. It's not too fine, and you definitely don't want to puree it. And now we'll go ahead and put everything else in. Oregano, rosemary, sage, and all that parsley. Now I have all this I want to get in there too, so I'm going to need my bed scraper! You knew I was going to take it out at some point. I haven't taken it out in a while. Nice and clean. Now we're going to let her rip again but you want to pulse this time, because if you just let it go, you're going to end up getting like a pesto, and you don't want something that smooth and homogenous. I'm going to do, do my little bouncing thing. See, it's starting to, starting to break down. Dave, you're not pulsing. Why aren't you pulsing? You said you were going to pulse. I'm not pulsing because I'm doing my little, my, 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 my little uh, bouncy thing, but, this is what you're looking for. You want a relatively fine chop, but not so fine that it's starting to look like pesto. So what I'm going to do is transfer this to a bowl. Now I'll go ahead and I'll add the oil and what you're looking for is just enough oil to bring it together and then to slightly submerge the herbs. You don't want so much oil in there that it's like a bath, right? And that is the marinade. Ideally, if you can make this the day before and then marinate your chicken, you're actually marinating the marinade first. Yeah, I know it sounds weird, but it really works. Smell it now, smell it tomorrow, or even smell it in a few hours and you're gonna smell a big difference. But that smell, I mean, talk about Doctor Who time machine. I just like go <laughs> way back. Chicken, next. I'm gonna cut up this chicken and you can actually see how I'm going to do that if you'd like to hear me explain it in detail. Check out my cut up chicken video. Look down there and uh, you can watch that one. But what I want to show you is that for this, <clears throat> for barbecuing, I left the bones on. Okay, I didn't remove the, the breast from the from the breast bone. I left them on. The bone actually helps protect the breast from the heat, and it'll help give you a retain more juice when you're barbecuing or grilling, which we're going to be doing. So, next up is yeah, I'm going to salt the day before. I know. Some of you are going, oh, why are you doing that? It's gonna draw out all the moisture. You shouldn't be doing that. Is it? Well, it's, think of it as a dry brine. Plus, this is the way my dad and uncle used to do it, so I'm doing it that way. 
They were actually doing a dry brine and they didn't even know it. <laughs> it was fine. Okay, salt on one side, diamond kosher, some pepper, and yes, you can do freshly ground if you want. Um, I don't really see the purpose uh, because it's gonna be marinating overnight and then it's gonna be grilling and I mean, if it's a steak, that's one thing, but okay. So now I'll do the other side. Let me just get in a couple here and show you what I wanna do. I'm using tongs because I don't want to keep your hands clean, right? Because it's chicken. Take um, a Ziploc bag or a plastic bag. Take a plastic bag. And I'm going to put all the dark meat in one bag and two hind quarters. And then I'll put those in the other bag. And then I'll divide the white meat up into another bag. And then here is that amazing <laughs> marinade. Oh, yeah. Zip it up and shake and bake. Now there's all that air in there. So here's a little trick. Open up the bag just a teeny bit. Open. Bring it up against you. Push all that air out. Seal up that hole again. Now the entire thing, the entire surface is covered in marinade. That puppy goes in the fridge overnight, and then tomorrow it's manja time. Well, we have to grill it first. Okay, that's ready now. And I have this gas grill. You can use a gas grill, you can use charcoal, you can use whatever you wanna use. Uh, most people have a gas grill just because it's convenient. And I've got this one that's been preheating for about a half hour. Look at your grill as like an oven, right? When this is down, or a stove top when that's open, just like on a stove. And then you're gonna have some burners that can go hot. Divide it up into two or three. What I'm gonna be doing just with this chicken is I'm just gonna be dividing it up into two. Meaning, I'm gonna start the chicken here on indirect heat. What do I mean by that? I've got them all on, right? But these here, these three, I'm gonna turn off. I've got these two on. I've got them on sort of moderately high. And what I'm gonna do is start the chicken on indirect heat, inside down. Every time I do this, I think of my uncle Mike, who was not the uncle who helped my dad in the backyard growing up. But the way I was a teenager, he invited us over for a barbecue and he'd never cooked anything in his life, let alone a barbecue. And so he was grilling chicken. I think the chicken was done in about eight minutes flat and Everyone got a beautiful, nice piece of charcoal. We actually ordered Chinese food. God, it smells good already. So I've got all my white meat together and I'm gonna put all my dark meat together. And you see, I'm putting them closely together. Makes it easier to handle and season and baste. Here's the secret to the Musa family barbecue. Number one, that marinade. Number two, I don't have the barbecue pit my dad actually built in the backyard. So I have a smoker box here filled with some wood chips. Now what I'll do, I'm gonna close that lid and I'm gonna let it go for maybe, I don't know, five, six, seven minutes, somewhere in there. Then I'll come and I'll turn them, let it go for another 10 minutes or so, turn it again. And it's just a matter of turning and cooking indirectly because now it's sort of like an oven, right? At the end is when we go and we put it on direct heat and then you get those nice grill marks and that charring on the outside. So now there's really nothing to do except wait for the next, I don't know, six, seven minutes. Yeah. Let's give it a turn, shall we? You got just a little bit of color there. That's fine because you'll get more color later. These are really thick breasts. Typically the breasts cook a lot uh, less than the dark meat, right? So we're just gonna see what happens with these because they're just so darn thick. The white meat normally is like uh, 145 and the dark meat, up you cook it up to 165. Now see this one here, take a look at that. That one's darker, okay? That's because that one is closer to the flame over here. There, now I wanna show you as far as zones, this one here is the hottest, right? 
You can see that, it's darker. This one is not as dark, so it's not as hot as here. And this one is <laughs> pretty much almost the same as when I put it in, so that's even cooler. So I actually have three zones going on here. I'm gonna let that go. And then we'll come back for another visit in about five minutes. So as you can see here, I've actually moved some things around. And that's what you have to keep doing, right? When you're cooking, it's sort of like driving, as I always say. You have to keep adjusting. You can't just keep going at the same speed. So I've actually moved the box, the smoker box over here, because I found that it's hotter and it takes up less room over here. So I think that works well. And then the uh, wings I've actually moved over here and that's been working better. And the breasts have slowly worked their way over this way. And now those are done first. They typically are, but just look at how, how nice those look. And I guarantee they're gonna be nice and juicy. The um, dark meat is still gonna continue to cook for a bit more, which is okay, because we can let the breasts rest for a bit. I think these are probably gonna take another, I don't know, five to eight minutes, and then we're gonna be good. Nice. So this is not something that my family used to do, but I know some people kind of like lemon with their chicken. I know I do. I don't always really do this, but I thought it would be kind of nice is to grill some lemons. Then you can squeeze that grilled lemon juice over the chicken. Grilled lemon juice always tastes different than just fresh lemon juice. I'm gonna stick them right in the grill. And the natural sugars are gonna caramelize. You just gotta make sure you watch it though. Look at that. Look at that. You have to say, even if you've not had this yet, yet, keyword, that looks good. <laughs> okay, I, I'm a dark meat guy, so I'm gonna go for some dark meat. And I have Aunt Levia's potato salad, which you can look up somewhere down there and get the recipe and make it because these two are like a marriage made in heaven. These two things I totally grew up on. And everybody I know I've given it to just absolutely loves it. Can I have the recipe? Now you can download it. I love that because then people end up making it and sharing it with everybody else. Okay, let's try this chicken. Right through that joint. Look at that, cooked all the way through, nice. And let's, oh my God, it's so juicy. My dad's standing there, my uncle's standing there, and they're both going, not so bad. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Make this with your friends and family and give them memories to pass on to other generations. Mm-mm, good. Damn, that's good.